Welcome. Uh, I'm happy to be joined with Stan Eichner, who is a photographer uh, who was all set to have an exhibition up at Somerville Media Center uh, right before the coronavirus crisis hit uh, and the quarantine hit. And uh, so we were thinking about ways that we could help out each of the artists who were scheduled to be our, uh, on our art wall exhibit for the rest of the year. And uh, Stan was really good enough to uh, allow us to, to be the, the art guinea pig, if you will, <laughs> of, this, uh, of this series and in a way to help promote uh, artists' work such as him. So hello, Stan. How are you? Uh, pretty good. And thanks for staying with it. you. were persistent in terms of trying to figure out how can we make some version of the exhibit happen? So I very much appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, is the work of, of local artists is important and it's always, it's been important from the beginning in our art wall program and uh, just finding ways to continue to promote local artists in this way is really important to us. And uh, we want to welcome you. Thank you. So jumping in uh, with your photography work, um, you, the name of your, your exhibition was, uh, what we must protect fiercely, which, um, you know, has a obvious, uh, and, and kind of, uh, in your face environmental statement right there. Um, very, uh, uh, pro advocacy for that. Um, is there anything you want to, to, to let viewers know about your art on the onset, uh, as we, as we go more into like, you know, we're going to talk about like your practice as an artist yeah. and why you take these photos, but uh, what, what would you what would you want to start off with? Well, I think I, I would set the scene that uh, the images in this exhibit are really meant to capture and uh, communicate the beauty in this world, but it's a world that's being threatened by the current climate crisis, and that's why the title is "What We Must Fiercely Protect." I've been lucky enough to go to various places that are just gorgeous. Um, and, you know, it breaks my heart to see how all of that is being threatened by this crisis. And so this, this exhibit was an attempt to sort of combine my passion for photography with my newer uh, climate activism. And so how, how important is photography to you? And what is it about the, the, the photography medium that, that speaks to you? You know, I, I, really, it's I really love it. I mean, I think in eighth grade, I did this trip out west and I brought a little camera with me. And I was just captivated. I didn't know it was called landscape photography, you know, Yellowstone Park and Grand Canyon. And just to really capture those pictures and bring them back. Mm. And so, you know, I've done it off and on over the years, more seriously in the last 10 or so years. And um, it, it lights, it, it excites me. It's a passion. I was saying to someone that, you know, a lot of times you're trying to get out in the morning uh, at dawn before the sun comes up to catch a special, that special light. And you're out there, it's cold and often it's wet. And you're like, why am I here? And then the sun comes up and lights up. And it's like, oh yeah, this is the magic. This is, this is what it's all about. So it, it's pretty amazing, I feel. Yeah. And um, can you tell us a little more about, about um, nature photography in particular and, and uh, taking that on as, as a subject? And, um, you know, you mentioned the, the, uh, the preciousness of, uh, nature and the environment at this moment. Um, but what also motivates you to, to, to take these photos? Well, um, they speak to me. I mean, here we are in Somerville, pretty urban. And so, um, uh, I actually enjoy taking pictures in Somerville. I had, was able to show some over, at, um, East Somerville main streets. So that's fun. But, you know, you're out on the mountains or a stream in the Smoky Mountains or, or the Andes in Chile. Mm. That's, that's just, I mean, I feel very incredibly fortunate to be able to have those opportunities. And, you know, I have friends with disabilities. I was a disability activist before in my day job before. And, you know, there's people that can't get to that. Mm. So if I can do it and really bring those 
experiences to light for other people, that's that's pretty special too. And so uh, when you're traveling to these places, are you traveling with uh, photography in mind or, or does like serendipity play into the process, you know, or, or are you planning to go to these sites uh, beforehand and setting up beforehand? Tell us a little bit about your process. Yeah. So I, I, not all, uh, but many of the uh, images in this exhibit are ones that resulted from uh, a photography workshop. So we go out with a very experienced photographer, sometimes two, and they they would set it up so you could have this experience. And so a lot of my, like Chile and Ireland, Scotland, were all explicitly photography workshops. I've also been lucky. Uh, my bro- my, I have a brother who's a little bit older, and he and I have been able to go on a bunch of just our own trips together. And it's actually a very special time to hang out with my brother and take pictures. It's kind of like, it's heavenly, actually. And you, uh, some of the pictures in the exhibit are from that, uh, mostly out west. He lives out in California, and we've been able to go to Death Valley and parts of California, Oregon. So that's very special, too. So like two of my loves, my brother and photography. No, that's really sweet. Um, and so what about your, your art career? How did you, how did you start? Um, was it just this, this workshop, this, these photography workshops? Did you have any experience coming into that, um, beforehand? Uh, and where do you make art? Do you make it in, in, in your home? Uh, do you have a studio? So it's a home studio. And these days with digital, it's all computers. And I have my own printer that I can do some size photos up to eight by 10 larger ones. I go to a commercial printer in uh, East Cambridge and um, I'm sorry, something before that you're asking me. Um, Oh, about um, your art career. Oh yeah. So uh, I never went to art school or did formal training. Um, I did a bunch of trips with my brother and actually, we were all set to go on one of these when, due to health issues, we had to cancel it. And so I kind of scrambled and I found someone, a really good landscape photographer, was leading a trip to a Smith Island, which is in the Chesapeake Bay. So that's the first time I just sort of jumped into it. And for me, that's been a really good way to learn, you know, sort of hands on in the field. And so I've been. Again, I've been lucky enough to go on a a fair number of those. Uh, So that's been most of my training, though. Just this weekend, I took an online, a whole weekend course on the processing of images and stuff. So I I get knowledge where I can, all different places. Nice. Very nice. Um, And then before we we talk about some of these images, um, I just want to ask if the how the current pandemic is affecting your work. Well, most obviously, I had this great exhibit. All you know, twenty one images were framed and matted and ready to be hung up. So that affected it. Uh, Interestingly, on the flip side, I I just mentioned this uh, conference that it was going to be in Chicago. In per like an a live in person one, and they switched it over a couple of weeks to a virtual one. So I was able to participate in basically a three day conference. That I probably it's not as likely I would have been able to actually attend in person. So that switch to virtual conference made it possible for me to see uh, an amazing array of photographers from all over the world. We had over 800 people there uh, on, uh, participating. And so, so there were individual workshops as part of that conference that you participated in? Is yeah, that- it was a whole schedule. It began Friday afternoon, and there were like 12 workshops at a time. There was a image review where some experienced photographers look at a set of your pictures and give you feedback. So it was quite hands-on, given that none of us were there in person. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so that, I wouldn't say it's an upside, but at least it, it's um, everything's changing mm-hmm. as a result of this um, pandemic. And um, it'll be 
I mean, I guess another direct way, uh, my brother and I had been talking about a trip to Canada sometime in the early fall. That's probably not going to be workable now. So it, it forces you to be more creative. I've done sort of more walking around the neighborhood, uh, sort of smaller studies rather than like big, you know, scope, uh, big sweeping scenes. Well, that's, that's, that's good to hear that you're uh, still able to engage uh, with the with the professionals that you want to and to get your work seen in this way. Um, that's that's good to know. Um, why don't we why don't I enable screen share here okay. and we can um, chat about some of your work here. Let's see. So um, you were good enough to send me a set of images and uh, these you're going to make available on your website. Um, and did you want to mention that website right now? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. So it's staneichner.smugmug.com. And uh, it's a funny name, but it's, it's a nice platform. And you go on there and you'll see there's lots of different galleries with images within it. And the one right at the top is called SMC uh, Photography Exhibit. And all 21 images that are going to be in the show or are in that gallery. Very nice. Now, in this in this first set of images here that we're looking at, um, what what can you tell us about? Um, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> what can you tell us about about where these were taken, and uh, maybe a little bit about how you shot these? Sure. So this one uh, is Discovery Park, which is uh, in Seattle, and um, I was actually at a, a totally non photography get together, and when it was over. Just so I headed out with my camera to this park, and it was, as you can see, it was really beautiful. It really captures a bit of that Northwest uh, feeling. Wow, very nice. Yeah, and so the yeah you you had mentioned the Pacific Northwest, the uh, the West Coast. Um, What is it? What's the biggest like contrast that you see with uh, with the landscapes out there as opposed to the ones uh, a little closer to home? Big, open, great dark blues and greens, big blue sky. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, this one here is actually Smoky Mountains, uh, a stream there. Um, that was a beautiful place. There's one that's, I'm not sure when it's going to come up. There's red foliage. Um, do you see that? It was, I think it was number one. And then, yeah, this one. Is it this one? Yeah. So this was also in the Smoky Mountains. It was part, I took it during a workshop. What's interesting is uh, folks might remember that there was a huge fire in the Smoky a couple of years ago. And the fire happened just a couple of months after we were there. And not this exact location, but very nearby is, is the section of the park that got burned up. Mm-hmm. So it's literally what we must protect or it's going to be subject to this climate crisis. Mm-hmm. And looking at the, the vibrant, um, almost fluorescent colors that we're looking at. Um, how much, how much um, tweaking do you do um, with the colors? Yeah, so I shoot in what's called RAW, which is the maximum information you can get uh, electronically. And then if you look at a RAW image, you actually can't look at RAW because it's not processed. So it requires some processing. And what a lot of the skill is doing everything to maximize the information so that it looks like what you saw at the time. So this is actually quite accurate. It was an amazing foliage. And you, you might think, oh, it must have been a sunny day. That would be when you'd see the brightest foliage. Turns out uh, a, a drizzly, cloudy day is best for foliage. I was surprised. Mm. I just learned that on that trip. It's a way that it can absorb the color without getting um, unattractive, too much shadows. So yep. this, was a, this was a day almost like today, you know, gray and, and rainy. Mm. And uh, what, sort of, what sort of lens do you use? Uh, well, they, these are with several different cameras. So uh, typically I have a zoom. Uh, currently I have between 24 to, 10, 24 to 105 millimeters. So that I, I can do the attempt some cropping while I'm taking the picture. Wow. This one, 
great first set of images from the Pacific Northwest there. And then okay. as... Um, I was just going to say that last one you showed. Yeah. We can, um, if we can just go back a second. Um, here or, or, or the one that it was just up. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Uh, this is Glen Brittle, which is on the Isle of Skye in Scotland. That's one of my most recent trip back in the fall. Scotland is an amazing place. I had never been there before. And uh, almost everywhere you turn were very dramatic, gorgeous images. Mm. Gorgeous. Yeah. Like that tree is just so dramatic. And then the light. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Um, and then, and then the, I have to go come back to this image and just with the colors, like that, that kind of purple that you see on the ground and yeah. then the, the purple in the tree, like th this was how it, how it looked. It almost it looked was, like, it was that lush rain, you know, rain foresty type of look. Yeah. And the, and the green, you know, sort of glow you can, if you look at that lower branch, mm -hmm. that, that's how it looked. It was pretty amazing. And it was late afternoon, so you can see the, the what's called golden light coming in from the left-hand side of the image. Yeah. Really lit it up. It seems really otherworldly. Like, let's see. So this is more um, animal subjects, I believe. Exactly. Um, and if when it was going to be on a wall, we had basically three sets, mm -hmm. groups or clumps of images. And that first set, both thematically and chromatically, they went together. So the greens and the browns and the blues. And then I, I wanted a set, you know, a lot of, I'm not an animal photographer per se, but I can't help myself. So uh, I had some of these images and uh, the same message, if we don't protect these animals, we're all done for, mm. you know, including uh, the bee that we just had pollinating the flower. There's a monkey. Um, these are flamingos from Bolivia. Mm, uh, gorgeous. Thanks. Yeah, it was, it was, that was an amazing scene. It was just, it seemed like hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of uh, these birds, these flamingos just in this low lake, which is where they hang out. And is that, is that salt in the back there? Or, or yes, is it, it is. It's salt? It is. It's a salt lake, and then it's, it's usually there's just a, a fairly narrow, shallow water. Apparently, mm -hmm. uh, they need a little bit of water because of how they build their nests, but not too much water. It's a little bit of water to protect them from some predators, but not too much because the nest has to rise above the surface level. So, mm -hmm. this is a blue heron that uh, I shot. A picture of in uh, Virginia. You yeah. see a lot of these uh, in this area too. Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally on the Charles River and some of the other waterways around here. And the, the um, was this blue heron alone, or was it there, a group? There was a, there was a creek river where there was a series of them, but not together. They were kind of spread out. Yeah, I noticed that they tend to be kind of loners out in the yeah. wild. <laughs> yeah, they seem to be. And if you can capture the eye like that, that's sort of. Yeah, and that beautiful uh, yellow that's in the underbeak there. Yep. Oh, very nice. Where yeah. was this uh, monarch taken? This was just down in uh, New Jersey. We uh, There's a summer place that we often go to. And this was, they, there's a little museum with a garden in the back. Mm. And I always like to go there. And um, it's fun to capture mm. the place. <laughs> what's yeah. the story here <laughs> this is okay so this is a, a Panamanian monkey and um, there's a Yiddish phrase called for crimta which means unhappy or dissatisfied basically and I thought that's really what his face communicated and quite frankly I thought his message to the humans is you guys have really screwed it up and you're running out of time <laughs> I, really, I really think he's kind of unhappy with the way we haven't been good stewards of this uh, planet. Wow. Yeah, this, uh, this is an osprey. And this was down at that first workshop I mentioned, um, Smith Island, which is almost a poster for rising oceans. It was, it's going to, dis it's 
it's well on its way to disappearing as an island. Mm. And um, we pulled up on a boat, and this looks like a mature bird. It's actually uh, a chick, and it, it can't yet fly. Hmm. But he was trying to be intimidating, I think, by flapping his wings. So we were, we were able to get really quite close. And this was looking up onto uh, a perch that that this uh, animal is on. Yeah, they have sort of on a pole are these large nests, and I the mother was sort of circling overhead, and I wasn't sure how long we'd be able to stay near her chick. So we took the picture relatively quickly and moved on. Mm, yeah, uh, great, uh, great timing with this one. <laughs> that was lucky. <laughs> Very dramatic uh, animal shots there. And then uh, I believe this is the, the last set of images that we're gonna look at here. And uh, really remarkable colors and in, in the in, in the the way that you set your horizon here and where you're capturing the sky and the reflection of the sky and the pool below. What can you tell us about this? So this was, this is a geyser. I think it's a Tatio, T-A-T-I-O geysers. In Chile, this this sort of exactly illustrates what I mentioned before. We got there very early. It was completely dark, and you could almost see the steam trails, you know, make it out. But it wasn't that clear. And then the sun popped out, and this is um, this is what it looked like right before sunrise. And uh, you know, I worked hard to get the reflection. And, and the shape in the pool as well as in the sky, uh, and then how the how the sky isn't like a solid gray. You have that like deep. I mean, uh, blue. You have that deep blue in the in the right in the upper right, and then as you look across the 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 photograph, it becomes a, a lighter blue. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's really lovely. And then, um, ooh, and are all of these in Chile? Uh, those, yes, um, I just want, yes, so the, the geyser is San Pedro, Chile, mm -hmm. and then, uh, the next one are, uh, those are the Andes in Chile. Wow. The salt, uh, ones, this is at, uh, sun, dusk. Mm. And what I really like are, they say we can do different layers going back. So you have the mountains in the front, that middle level of the blue purple mountains to the sky, and then the purple, the pink, pinkish purple in the top. <clears throat> so that was a very exciting capture. Mm. And this is around dusk. Yes. Beautiful. And then um, another dramatic landscape here. This one yeah. a little more. Uh, energetic and uh, I can feel those waves. <laughs> I can tell you I felt them at the time. We were on a relatively small boat. This is off the coast of Ireland. This is what's called Little Skellig. And uh, we were going around. Again, it was another pretty wet, gray day. And we turned and just at the right moment, there was some sun uh, peeking through and hitting the cliffs on the left and lighting up the, the the cloud and mist in the back. And so um, that was pretty wonderful. Um, I don't have the strongest stomach for boats, quite <laughs> frankly. And little did I know that when you're looking through a viewfinder, it magnifies the effect of the motion. So this is quite literally the last image when I was still functioning. So <laughs> it was worth it, but- uh, Definitely, I would say. Wow. Yeah, this is uh, this is right on the border of uh, Chile and Bolivia. Mm. Um, is this the uh, near the Atacama Desert at all? Or yeah, uh, we were in. All, all of these are f around the Atacama Desert, mm. the northernmost Chile, and then one day we went over to Bolivia. Hmm. And I saw a documentary where there's a uh, uh, um, uh, a bunch of observatories in the Atacama. Yeah, right at the top. There's a, you see a whole wave of them because it's the clearest 
one of the clearest spaces in the world. Yeah. So you look up on this ridge. I want to say there's like eight or 10 and they're all, they're right next to each other. What I did not realize until someone explained it is they're all capturing data and they sh- they're they interconnected so that they share and it magnifies the power of what they're able to pull in. Mm. So we, we couldn't go there. I, I take some special pass, but we did see them. It was it was quite a scene. It was some just a lot of them on the top of a mountain. How was the night sky there? Oh, incredible! Mm. Really dramatic. I, I wish I were better at capturing uh, star pictures, but I'm learning. Still running the flow. <laughs> this is back to in the U.S. This is Death Valley. I've gone there a couple of times. It, it's, it's really an exciting place. I remember thinking, ah, Death Valley, it could be just a desert, but it's geologically, it's really varied. You know, one section has dunes, another part has mountains, and there's a brisky point. Um, it, it's a wonderful location. And what time of year did you go? Uh, Not the dead of summer, I hope. <laughs> No, no, you got to go earlier than that. This was, uh, we were there in February. Oh, okay. Uh, two years ago. And this is uh, same, it's That's also same. Death Valley. Yeah. Different angle. Now this is uh, Connor Pass in Ireland. Another one that we had to get up pretty early to get here before the sunrise. And then we, it was dark and you're waiting and waiting and then boom, you know, the light hits the clouds. That's what gives it the pinkish tinge. And then if you can get the reflection in the pools, uh, I think this is one of the higher places in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, if I recall correctly, Ireland is beautiful. i had never been before and everyone said, Oh yeah, it's gr- beautiful. And shades of green. It's, can't begin to put in words what an amazing, um, gorgeous landscape there is in Ireland. Mm. One thing that I'm really uh, that I really enjoy about your work is uh, kind of like the hard edge that that um, like your subject matter and and the backgrounds that the, the hard edge that they all have. Like usually that there's um, um, a lot of uh, photographers rely on um, like the blurring a lot with uh to get that depth of field and uh i really am am struck by the uh the hard line the hard edge that um everything has uh and it it kind of plays with my mind a little bit because uh all the all the things that i expect like the the background to be a little blurrier Mm -hmm. it it kind of has this flattening effect that uh really just highlights everything Uh, and especially the color Uh i enjoy that a lot thank you yeah. Um, well, that's that. That's all the time we have, Stan. <laughs> yeah, that was quick. Yeah, it went by really quick. Um, but I, I do want to uh, thank you for sharing your work, um, for uh, uh, being willing to share your work uh, at SMC and sharing it with us now in this in this way. Um, if you want to give your website another mention. Yes, uh, I definitely will. Yeah. Uh, www.stanEichner.com dot smug mug that's one word dot com perfect and i'll put you right on it and i think it's over so i think it's over 500 images on that site so have at it it's, it's fun to look at i think all right well it was a lot of fun talking to you stan and uh i will catch up <laughs> i hope so thanks again really appreciate you uh being flexible and coming up with uh something that works so thank you thank you stan Bye-bye.